So on the other side of, of Central Park, I was just looking at buildings on the east side. Um, there's uh, the Dakota Building, which is the building uh, where John Lennon uh, lived for many years when he lived in New York City, and it was also where he, that life ended when he was he was uh, shot down in the street um, as he was uh, getting from his limousine uh, into the building uh, to go up to his apartment, and uh, so I got lots of shots of that building. I got to see walk all the way around, rode all the way around, even the back little section. A uh, little alley between that building and the next building. I, I went down there and I, I saw it from the back. And there's a little, uh, so the way that building is built, it has um, sort of an exterior um, shell of a building, and in the center of it is this big courtyard. And uh, you can actually see into the courtyard uh, from a few spots um, along around the outside. Uh, but that building is, is, is quite a few story tall, like maybe seven or eight stories tall. And uh, it was built uh, like quite early on in, in the, the late 1800s. And uh, it was built, you know, it's built pretty far up. It's on like 73rd Street, I think. And uh, and when it was built, it was like definitely the biggest thing around in that area. None of the other big tall buildings had been built at all. And I, I've seen a picture um, taken of the Dakota from Central Park. And it just, it's just standing up so tall. It's, there's nothing else around it that, that's that big. And uh, so it had a long... Um, history of being this big, elegant building where lots of famous people lived uh, many years before John Lennon uh, moved there, and it was already really well known. Um, but now it's, of course, even more well known because of, of what happened to John uh, when he lived there. And actually, apparently Yoko Ono still uh, still lives there. She still rents uh, two or three apartments. Um, I think on the uh, the corner that's nearest uh, uh, the gate to Central Park. Uh, and speaking about Central Park, right across the street from uh, where the Dakota is, there's a, a garden or a, a meadow that, that was put there um, uh, in memory of John Lennon. It's called Strawberry Fields, um, in reference to the song that he wrote about uh, uh, the field that uh, he went to when he was a kid. I, I've seen many uh, pictures from uh, people that are around my age that, that I know uh, who have been there, and, and there's a stonework in, in, the, in the brick. Uh, that says the word imagine, and that's sort of his his tribute tribute spot uh, in Central Park. And uh, I was actually a little bit disappointed seeing it. It was, you know, it's really just a small little circle. It wasn't. I thought it was this big fountain, and there'd be tons of, you know, John Lennon stuff. And it's really just a small little, very plain, um, imagine uh, little circle. Like the circle was maybe two meters in diameter or something, maybe three meters, not very big at all. I guess I kind of misunderstood uh, what Strawberry Fields uh, was supposed to be. Um, it's actually a, like a relatively, has a right, relatively large uh, surface area in the park. You know, not a significant part, maybe one percent of a huge central park, but that's still quite a big area. Um, and it's not just, uh, you know, supposed to be um, stuff that, that represent John Lennon. It's supposed to be a place that anyone can go and, and just appreciate the silence. Uh, that that section, area, that area of the park has special rules about noise, and uh, you know you can't have any any loud music or musical instruments. Or the idea is that you're supposed to that's supposed to be a quiet place you can go uh, when you're in the park. Uh, so that pretty much ended uh, my time spent in Central Park. The next place I went to uh, is a building which is right on 59th Street, uh, right on the east side of Central Park, right at Fifth Avenue. Uh, which is called the General Motors building. And uh, outside of the General Motors building, there's this big uh, glass cube, um, which is uh, where the, app, the big Apple store um, for uh, Apple Computer Store um, for uh, New York City is. And right now, they're, it's under construction. They have a big uh, like wooden structure around the glass structure. You can't really see it. And they said on the outside that they're, um, they're transforming it from... Uh, uh, the big glass cube used to have 90 uh, small panes of glass, and they're up, they're changing it, they're improving it, they say, and they're changing it from 90 small squares to uh, 15 large squares. Uh, I don't think they're actually making the store any bigger, they're just changing the appearance of uh, their landmark a little bit. But that really wasn't the reason I was there. I was there to see a building which is inside of the General Motors building, a gigantic toy store which is called FAO Schwartz. Uh, which, uh, I mean, it's a big place for kids to go, and, uh, to, you know, to play with toys and, you know, to buy toys. Uh, but to me, the, the big thing about it was that it has, um, the big piano, which is, 
Uh, if you know the movie Big, uh, there's a really uh, important scene in it when uh, Tom Hanks and uh, his uh, his like his the manager of his company, like the top guy in his company, um, are in there and, and they're playing uh, songs on the uh, the big piano, uh, which is a big piano that you can step on and walk on, and you know you play the different notes on that piano. Uh, so that's what I went in there to do. And uh, I realized, after I went in, I went in uh, right at 7 o'clock, I believe it was. And apparently the store closes, like, right at 7. Uh, and as I was walking around, uh, you know, people, I saw everyone was leaving. And then when I got to the big piano, uh, the person said that uh, uh, the piano is closed for the day. The store is closed. Uh, you know, finish up all your purchases and then leave. Uh, so I didn't get to go on the big piano today, unfortunately. Um, I'm hoping to, to come back uh, tomorrow. Uh, I've got a few things planned for tomorrow, but uh, that's one of the ones that I'm, I'm hoping to do. So after that, I was pretty much done everything that I had planned for my day. I got managed to squeeze in the Empire State Building along with uh, all of the other things that I had planned for the day, which were all the Central Park things. Um, so after that, I just kind of wanted to go home. I went and looked in a few souvenir shops uh, on my way home, so I... I went through uh, Times Square and I stopped on 42nd Street because I knew there was a few souvenir shops there. And uh, I was I got to Central Park like right at the perfect time. Like I heard that going to Central Park um, at dusk is the best time to see it because uh, you know there's all the big huge billboards and all the big lights coming on, and you can really you can't really appreciate them as, as much uh, during the day uh, as you can uh, when it gets dark. So uh, seeing it right before dark or right as it's starting to get dark. Um, is the perfect time. So it was really nice to be there. Um, again, I'd been there already, but it was during the day, and seeing it at night was was better. Um, they have this neat thing that I hadn't seen before uh, when I was there before. They have this big uh, TV screen on the side of one of the buildings, and there's a camera uh, which shines down, and it's, uh, it's per so the TV is showing uh, what the camera is, is filming, and the camera is filming a big section of the street where everyone's standing. Um, and uh, so I stood there for a while, and everyone kept pointing at the screen. And I was like, oh, look, there's me. And I looked for, like, a, quite a while trying to find myself on the screen. And I finally did. And I couldn't believe that it took me so long because it was really easy to, to, to spot out a, a guy that was standing by himself with a, a big uh, bike with a bright orange milk crate on the back. It was pretty easy to see. Um, but uh, anyway, that's where I saw myself. That was good. Uh, they also have this other neat feature where they, uh, uh, so they have this, you know, a screen that was showing everyone on the street, and then all of a sudden this big uh, person would come out in front over top of the screen, like, you know, just on, on the screen, but she'd cover over um, what the screen was showing, and then she had this camera, like it was like a Polaroid camera, and she pointed it out, you know, into the, the crowd, and then she'd pretend to take a picture, and then a little picture would, would uh, roll out of the top of the Polaroid, and, and then she'd hold up the screen, and it would have, like, one little section um, of the people that were um, uh, down on the street, and that, that was pretty cool. So I waited around for a little while, uh, but my picture never showed up. Uh, but that was okay. Uh, but it's pretty cool to see. So, anyways, after that, I, I uh, looked in souvenir shops, didn't end up buying anything. I'm gonna uh, do a lot of my souvenir shopping tomorrow, I guess. And uh, so that was pretty much the end of the day. Uh, for tomorrow, it's gonna be uh, I'm gonna check out of the hotel uh, before before noon, which is the official checkout time and I'm going to pretty much run uh, tomorrow the same way I ran every other day. Uh, I've got lots of little little errands to uh, to wrap up things that uh, got cut from other days uh, due to time constraints. I'm going to try and get everything that I wanted to see uh, seen before I before I go and uh, the hotel is going to let me uh, leave my suitcase here during the day and then I'm going to come back in the evening and pick it up and then I'm going to take it take a taxi to the uh, the Port Authority bus station, and then I'm going to use my ticket and get back home to Toronto. So I don't really know how, how tomorrow is going to work in terms of video. I'm definitely going to bring my camera with me. Uh, I might have to do one of these narration sort of videos uh, while I'm on the bus, or it may get delayed um, until I'm back home. I'm, I'm not really sure. Um, but uh, anyways, uh, I hope you stay tuned and watch what happens for me uh, tomorrow. Um, if you like what you see, uh, please subscribe to me. I really appreciate the, the subscribers and I really appreciate uh, support from uh, people that are, are following my trip here in New York City. Uh, so anyways, thanks for watching.